So thank you for the introduction. And I'm proud, I'm pleased to have you all today. My title is For Real Reconstruction of Yubari, Reveal Responsibilities of the Bankruptcy and Protect Human Rights. Today, I'd like to talk about a story of my hometown, Yubari. Yubari is located in the middle of Hokkaido, which is the northernmost island, and 630 kilometers far from Fukushima. It is one of the towns that accept some victims of the disaster because it was not affected by the earthquake and has capacity to welcome people. The reason why I talk about Yubari is because I would like to appeal to people of all over the world to understand the situation of Yubari and know that Yubari problem is not the isolated local issue in Japan. Instead, it is a symbol of one-sided relationships between the national government and rural areas, and also the gap between Tokyo and rural areas. Moreover, what I'd like to emphasize is that there are some similarities between situations in Fukushima and Yubari, because both were developed and directly influenced by the national energy policies and huge companies. And consequently, people there are suffered so much and have to struggle to recover. In 2007, Yubari declared to be financial co collapse and become financial restructuring organization. It meant that under the national control, Yubari was going to strictly <coughs> cut the budget for 18 years to pay back the debt of 35 billion yen. As a result, people in Yubari have been forced to live in the worst public service, though they have to pay the most expensive taxes in Japan. Actually, they suffer a lot of inconvenience every day. I believe not only Yubari, but also the national government, Hokkaido government, banks, and companies were responsible for this matter. So, the strict treatment by the national government toward people in Yubari is obviously a violation of human rights. I suppose most of you are not familiar with this problem. Although my story is a little complicated and need a lot of background knowledge, I hope I can communicate clearly what I have in mind. Then, let's look at what is Yubari. Yubari used to be a coal mining town. The nature is very beautiful, and the area, area is very wide. It stretches for 35 kilometers north and south, among mountains and rivers, and wider than Tokyo's 23 watts, and famous for a delicious Yubari melon. At the end of the 18th century, which was in the middle of the Meiji era, Yubari was founded as a coal mining town immediately, immediately after the discovery of coal stratum. Soon after, railways were constructed and Yubari was continuously developed and became one of the famous coal mining towns. The more the coal mine opened, the more workers and their families moved in. The miners' work was tremendously dangerous because coal strata was deep below the earth and digging it triggered big explosion. Every time big accident happened, hundreds of miners were killed. However, the coal mining company just shut the old one and opened new one, then gathered miners again. When it was most populated in 1960s, the population was about 120,000. Yubari was literally a flourish city. Miners and their families sometimes enjoyed delicious food like sushi, which was directly transported from the fishery port of Otaru. 
They were also, also afforded to buy brand new televisions. Movie theaters were built here and there, and people could enjoy the newest movies at the same time with Tokyo. In the peak time, 22 elementary schools were built, and one of them was the most populated elementary school in Hokkaido at the time. That was Yubari before I was born. I grew up and spent all my childhood in Yubari. At that time, Yubari was continuously declining in mining industry and population. Both of my parents were school teachers. After the graduation from junior high school, I moved out from my parents' place and began to live in big cities like Tokyo or Sapporo. But I often come back and stay in Yubari because my parents still live there. When I was a baby, Yubari had more than 50,000 people, but it's already past its golden era. Ruined coal mine facilities, abandoned buildings and houses, and shattered stores were left around the town. From my little eyes, the city seemed so gloomy and felt so sad. I remember someone told me, there used to be many coal mines, but now only three are working. In 1981, a big coal mine accident happened, and 93 miners were killed. It was just below the deep earth across a river from my house. The coal mining company, Hokutan, eventually bankrupted. Many people moved out from Yubari. Anyway, compared from now, the city has enough population to enjoy local festival every year in May. In 1990, when the population was 21,000, the last coal mine closed. This was the end of Yubari's coal mining history. On the other hand, simultaneously, with this declining of coal mine history, Yubari began to promote a new policy called From Coal Mine to Sightseeing. Big facilities for sightseeing like Coal Mine Museum, Historical Park, Amusement Park, Melon Castle were constructed. However, some of them, for example, Stuffed Specimen Museum of Animals and Science Museum of Robot seemed unnecessary and I didn't I didn't understand why they were made. As a whole, these sightseeing facilities did not seem to collect enough customers, except the coal mine museum. By the way, I have lived in Sapporo for 50, 15 years. In 2006, the news that Yubari was going to financial collapse made me astonished, shocked, and sad. The news was so sudden for me. Every newspaper thought that the bank bankruptcy was total because of Yubari city and people. But I was suspicious about this point of view. Just reading a few lines of articles, I could guess what was wrong with financial situation of Yubari and afraid why they did not mention the responsibilities of the national government, no Hokkaido government. I felt Yubari's people began to singled out as a symbol of stupidity because of bias report by mass media. Anyway, anyway I was just a citizen in Sapporo and didn't know what to say and what to do. I just felt structural unfairness in this country. All I could do was wish someone appropriate would appear and solve everything. After all, no super person appeared, and the view Yubari was to blame had been fixed. 
In 2007, Ubari became a financial restructuring organization. Three years later, the law was changed, it renamed as Financial Rehabilitation Organization. Under this policy, Ubari lost freedom of finance and became controlled by the national government. Ubari had to make a plan to pay back all the debts in total 18, 18 years. The problem is the content of this plan. As I mentioned, people in Ubari are forced to survive in the worst public service while they pay the most expensive taxes in Japan. It is so extremely severe for citizens of Ubari that it would destroy the community until finishing the repayment. Or is this the national government's intentions? Before explaining the content of the 18-year plan, you need to keep in mind that the population of Ubari is now only 10,000 people, and almost half of them are elderly people and their homes are scattered among broad mountainous areas. For your information, most of my view is based on stories directly heard from people in Ubari and a document filed by a group of lawyers called Japan Lawyers Association for Freedom. In Japanese, Jiyu Hosodan. Here is the content of the 18-year plan. One, the number of city workers is reduced by 60% and city workers' salaries cut by 40%. Two, integration of schools were executed, even though there was strong opposition from parents. Before, there were seven elementary schools, but after, only one elementary school was left. Please remember, Ch children are absolutely innocent for the debt. Three, library, swimming pool, playgrounds and parks, public bath, public toilet, community place were closed. Some community center were survived, but maintenance budget was cut, which forced local people to work without salary, and also the price for borrowing rooms doubled. Five, city hospital were privatized and downscaled as a clinic. Six, taxes were raised and the price of water service, child daycare fee were raised. And finally, even though the city followed tight budget reflect its effort to try to cut costs as much as possible, the national government put pressure on city workers not to use a full budget and save money for the repayment. Now, I'm going to list up the reasons why Ubari had to accumulate huge debts. One, the national government's responsibilities. Ubari's coal mine were directly connected to the national energy policy. At the early days, the government supported the development of coal mine. Several decades later, however, when the policy changed and told, from coal to petroleum oil, it became a turning point. Ubari began to lose coal mines and populations. Instead of coal mining, Ubari began to develop tourism. And it was the national government who strongly pushed Ubari to do it. Huge subsidies were introduced and many facilities were built, though they did not attract visitors as expected. Two, companies' responsibilities. As I mentioned, the coal mining company Hokdam bankrupted after the big accident. Then, it did not take its own responsibilities. Not only did it not pay its tax, but also forced Ubari City to buy their pro properties like land, hospital, miners' houses, old water supply system, and so on. The amount was 58 billion yen. Three, 
banks responsibilities. Some big banks continue to lend money while they knew the bad financial situation of Yubari because they were sure that they could get refunded by some government anyway. Four, the national and Hokkaido government's responsibilities. Officially, they denied to have known Yubari's bad financial situation, but this was very doubtful. The reality must have been that they just pretended innocence so that they could escape from their own responsibilities. Five, mass media's res responsibilities. Instead of criticizing under treatment, uh, uh, um, instead of criticizing unfair treatment of the national and Hokkaido government, mass media took sides with them and reported prejudiced one-sided opinion to tell all responsibilities was of you by city and citizens. Although some, science, uh, some sincere specialists argued that such views were wrong, it was ignored or minimized. Five years have passed since the bankruptcy of Yubari. At the beginning, people in Yubari were so shocked and disturbed by rushing mass media that they were at a loss what to do. Moreover, because of the long history of coal mines, there had been different types of groups of people, and some of them had been opposing or keeping distance each other. It was not natural and easy for people in Yubari to unite together, even though the financial crisis happened. However, during these five years, people's mind in Yubari has been changing little by little, and solidarity has been come into being to some extent. Some people try to find way to the real self-governing city. Some people try to conserve the beautiful nature of mountains, forests, and rivers. Some people are contributing to construct, construct, construct safe network or com communities. Some people try to keep the important history that deserves world heritage. However, the severe financial plan is an obstacle for people to do their activities and propose something to the city. Thus, the plan should completely be reconsidered. Then alternative measures to save people in Yubari should be created so that they can fulfill their potential and go toward a real reconstruction. Moreover, I would like to add that Yubari is a symbol of exhausted rural areas of Japan. As I showed, Yubari's crisis have been formed from historical and structural factors. Similar case can easily be found across Japan. I hope from now on, more people in Japan are going to think about how you can protect your own human rights in this country. Finally, one of my dreams is that Yubari's history will appropriately be conserved and be handed down for the next generation. What I'm afraid is that the precious history would disappear if nobody do anything. At this moment, Yubari City is unable to do it because of money shortage, while the witness of the history are going to much more elderly and weak. I hope people from all over the world will be aware of tre treasures of Yubari, such as history and beautiful nature. And I hope someday I will meet you all in Yubari and introduce you to wonderful people in you, buddy, there, show you around, enjoy beautiful nature, and learn and discuss together. Please come to you, buddy. Finally, thank you for giving me this great opportunity. I would like to give a special thanks to BPK Shunal, the organizer of this conference. That's all. Thank you.